Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This morning, President Trump responds to the 34 felony charges against him. This fake case was brought only to interfere with the upcoming 2024 election, and it should be dropped immediately. Immediately. What's next for the former president and why his lawyers are trying to dismiss him from attending his next hearing in person. Plus, the Metro National Police Department officers who ended the mass shooting at a private Christian school in Tennessee are now being honored for their quick response. What they're saying about how their training prepared them. Thing. Lead pass up ahead to Terrence Ross. Feeding up top for Tory. And that about sums it up how it went for the Spurs last night against the Phoenix Suns. But there were a few good moments for the Spurs. We have highlights just ahead. And let's look out there with live cans starting humid at 74 degrees, but we are expecting rain today. So we're going to be checking in with Justin very soon. And a good morning to you. It's Wednesday hump day. It's April 5th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far. I know it got pretty hot again yesterday. I'm looking forward for a little change. And we had a close call last night with a very strong thunderstorm. Uh, Justin Horn joins us now in the studio. He's in for Mike. And where do things stand this morning? Well, we're watching a front that's just to the north of San Antonio. So if you're heading out the door, if you're one of the early morning risers, uh, early morning commuters, be aware we're, we're starting to see some storms on the radar. And we're going to see these work a little bit closer <coughs> to San Antonio here over the next couple of hours. So you can see the storms popping up right there. That's along the front. That's going to slide south. And I'd say about 7 or 8 o'clock, we're going to watch for some of these storms moving to San Antonio. I don't think we're going to see a ton of severe weather or anything like that, but we do need to watch for a strong storm or two, and it could affect the morning commute. It quickly pushes through, by the way, so it's a small window for rain, but it is there. As we go outside for you right now, we've got cloudy skies, lots of humidity still, 75 degrees. Dew point is at 70, south southeast Julie winds at about 10 miles per hour. Here's the case at 12 hour forecast 30% chance of rain, 6, 7, 8 o'clock. We'll watch for some of those storms passing through. Then after they move through, we get gusty winds. It is cooler, so that's uh, good news there. Noontime, 70 degrees, and we'll only top out in the upper 70s today. But with those gusty winds, there's a fire threat for much of the area. Then we turn our attention to some good rain chances that will show up uh, later tonight into tomorrow and Friday. We'll have much more on that and how much rain we can expect coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. It's a growing problem in San Antonio and the Bear County Sheriff's Office is taking note. We're talking about the increase in violence associated with the distribution of THC vape pens. In some cases, Bear County officials report that teens have been shot and killed during drug deals. The effects of it are, are concerning enough, but the level of violence that these young people are, are willing to commit on each other as a result of, these, of this drug is even scarier. Sheriff Javier Salazar says BCSO will continue to educate the community on the dangers that come with THC vape pens. Former President Donald Trump has officially pleaded not guilty to 34 felony charges against him. Prosecutors say Trump conspired to undermine the 2016 presidential election by trying to suppress information that could harm his candidacy. So now Trump is due back in court at the end of the year. However, his lawyers have asked that he be excused from attending that hearing in person because of the extraordinary security required to have him show up. The president spoke last night about yesterday's events from his home in Florida. Incredibly, we are now a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. We can't let that happen. With all of this being said, and with a very dark cloud over our beloved country, I have no doubt, nevertheless, that we will make America great again. Thank you very much. And God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. The next in-person hearing date for Trump's case in New York is set for December 4th. Meanwhile, 3,000 miles from his New York legal drama, Donald Trump won a substantial victory in another court. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals sided with the former president yesterday in his effort to recoup additional legal fees from adult film star Stormy Daniels. She had filed and lost a defamation suit against him there. 
Daniels was ordered to pay Trump's attorneys more than $120,000 in legal fees. That's on top of the more than $500,000 in court-ordered payments to Trump attorneys she's already been required to pay. A judge dismissed her defamation lawsuit in 2018. She later lost an appeal and was ordered to pay Trump's legal fees for fighting both. The civil litigation is officially unrelated to Trump's arrest yesterday and the charges filed against him in New York. Trump denies ever having an affair with her. We are now hearing from the police officers first on the scene of last week's school shooting up in Nashville. They killed the shooter within four minutes, saving lives. As ABC's Rihanna Alley reports, one officer says when they arrived, the smell of gunpowder was in the air. This morning, one week after that deadly shooting at a Christian elementary school in Nashville, the three hero police officers who took down the shooter are describing those harrowing moments. Not knowing what I was walking into, I went through that door with purpose. Kept walking towards the gun, the sound of gunfire. Saw shell casings on the ground, uh, bullet holes on the door. Detective Sergeant Jeff Mathis, Detective Michael Colazzo, and Officer Rex Engelbert were the first three law enforcement officers through the front door of the Covenant School. Once we started hearing the first shots, that's when everything kind of kicked into overdrive for us. We had to push past the victim because uh, we continue to hear more shots being fired. All of us stepped over a victim. Um, I, to this day, don't know how I did that morally, um, but training is what kicked in. We then proceeded continually to with the sounds of gunfire. The shooter had already killed three nine-year-olds and three staff members when the officers opened fire, killing the 28-year-old shooter. Some of the responding officers had never met each other before, but they formed a team and put their own lives on the line with little hesitation. They was so in tune to trying to get in and take this threat down that they didn't think about their own safety. I took an oath on June 4th of 2012 to serve and protect this community. My family sometimes comes second. It has to. Rhiannon and Alley, ABC News, New York. 437, 74 degrees. And still ahead, how Tiger Woods is getting ready for the Masters that starts up tomorrow. And our San Antonio Spurs couldn't make it two in a row, losing to the Suns last night. Up next, some of the good moments the team had, and all while being very shorthanded. Look out there with Trans Guide. We see flashing lights out there at I-35 at Randolph right now. And we're going to be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos in the next half hour. Still a little muggy out there this morning. And I have actually forgotten which days we have a chance of rain this week. So we're going to get a refresher from Justin coming up. Spurs playing at Kevin Durant, the Phoenix Suns, shorthanded Spurs again. First quarter ball goes to Malachi Branham, and he dimes a cutting Julian Champagne for a layup. Spurs down 27-16. Suns pulling away Devin Booker with a floater of a trio of Spurs to make it 33-18 Phoenix. They led after 1-42-25, second quarter. Suns open on a 7-0 run to lead 49-25. Timeout San Antonio didn't help as the Suns would lead by as many as 31 in the first half. Malachi Branham makes a three ball with eight seconds left in the second. Spurs trailed at the half 69-51. Continuing to the second half, Spurs got within nine of the third in the third quarter. But by the end of the period, Phoenix was back ahead 97-76. San Antonio entered the night ranked last in scoring defense, having allowed just over 122 points per game. And it showed last night. Phoenix came roaring back, shooting 63% in the first quarter alone. And they kept the pace all the way to the end. Malachi Branham led the Spurs with 21. Trey Jones scored 20, while Keita Bates Diop and Sandro Mamu Kilashvili each had 13. But it wasn't enough. Spurs fall 115 to 94. Up next, Spurs play Portland tomorrow in Austin. Now to Toyota Field, where San Antonio FC played Club de Leon FC in the second round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup last night. San Antonio added seven guys to the roster on academy agreements prior to kickoff. Last season, SAFC advanced to the round of 32 in the tournament. 79th minute, SAC down 1-0. Adrian Valencia crosses to Dane Augustine, who puts it in the back of the net, tying the game at 1. Still at 1 extra time, Roman Holt with the PK in the 98th minute. He connects to make it 2-1. San Antonio FC, and that's where it ends. 2-1. 
in extra time. Tiger Woods is hoping to have a great week at the Masters as he seeks his sixth green jacket and 16th major championship. Woods, who last won at Augusta National in 2019, says he doesn't know how many more Masters he has left in him. He almost lost his leg in a car wreck and his body just aches a lot in large part because he says of how much he practices to compete and ultimately win. Woods says he loves Augusta National because it's like becoming like a second home for his golf game. And this week he says he's soaking it all in. It's really neat to be able to, to come here and play this golf course and uh, see all the, 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 the past champions. And, and the, you know, I know more guys on, on the Champions Tour than I do the regular tour. Uh, so to, to be able to see them again and, and uh, you know, catch up with, with, with these guys, is, it's... Uh, and again, look at my, my last couple of days playing with Fred. I mean, it's, uh, it's the best. I and mean, like, we don't get a chance to play very often. I mean, he was, he was like my, my, my dad on tour when I first came out here. And uh, <clears throat> be able to see him at 63 years old, pumping it out there and having a great time. Uh, it's been the best. A hot topic this week is live golfers coming together with PGA Tour members to chase down a green jacket. Some PGA Tour golfers have been outspoken about those that left for the live and some live guys have bashed the PGA Tour. But Rory McIlroy says this week is all about getting along. It's a very nuanced situation and there's different dynamics and, you know, you know, it's OK to, you know, get on with Brooks and DJ and maybe not get on with some other guys that went to live, right? Like it's a, you know, interpersonal relationships that's just how it goes but uh you know this is you know this week in this tournament is way bigger than any of that i feel and it's just great that all the best players in the world are together again for the first time in, in what seems to be quite a while the field of 88 golfers will tee up tomorrow morning in the first round. Tiger is paired with Victor Hovland and Xander Shoffley, and they'll tee off at 9:18 local time. Rory will go at 12:48 with uh, and golf with Tom Kim and Sam Burns. And that's a look at morning sports. And time now 4:44 and 24 degrees for now. Coming up next, why the founder of a student loan software company is now being accused of committing a 175 million dollar fraud scheme. And welcome back. It's 447. The founder of a student loan software company has been arrested and charged in an alleged $175 million fraud scheme. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, from startup CEO to accused of committing a $175 million fraud. Getting financial aid might seem really, really complicated, but at Frank, we've really simplified it for you. Charlie Javis was a rising star in the financial world, appearing in Forbes 30 under 30 list in 2019 and founder of the company Frank, a company that promised prospective students a simpler way to sign up for financial aid. But authorities say Javis faked data and repeatedly misrepresented numbers, touting that the company had 4.25 million users who signed up for an account count, but the real number, according to prosecutors, less than 300,000. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on the allegations and what Charlie Javis is saying this morning. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with trans guides. Stephen tells us that there is an accident right there at I-35 southbound at Randolph, we saw these flashing lights earlier, but traffic is still moving slowly in that lane. Yeah, the good news is he says it's a minor crash there by Loop 410. Well, some of you might be waking up to some showers and maybe thunder. Uh, it's possibilities. So far, we're starting to see some storms develop in the hill country. Mm -hmm. Those are going to work their way towards San Antonio here in the next couple of hours. We could see some lightning and thunder. I'm not anticipating a lot of severe weather, but uh, could we see a strong storm? It, yes, it, it's possible. There is the line starting to develop. There wasn't anything there an hour ago, but now we're starting to see these showers and storms pop up. And this is right along a frontal boundary that will be working south and east at a pretty quick clip this morning. I think by 7 or 8 o'clock, we'll see some of these storms around uh, the city of San Antonio. So let's zoom in a little bit closer here. And you can see the activity uh, that is uh, just to the east of Junction and will eventually work its way towards Fredericksburg. Looks like we got a boundary right about there somewhere in there, and that uh, is moving southeast again at a pretty quick clip this morning. 
with these storms right now, nothing that severe. This is mostly just good rain and still kind of north of our area, at least at the moment. But uh, Kerrville, Comfort, Fredericksburg, uh, this line should be here, I would say, within the next hour or two as it uh, progresses off to the south and east. So that's what we're watching right now. It's still pretty humid out ahead of it and uh, still pretty warm, too. And there's a look outside, 75 degrees and cloudy. Dew point is still at 70 with a south southeasterly wind at 10 miles per hour. Winds are going to be a big deal today, too, because as that front comes through, we'll see north and northeasterly winds kick in, and that is going to cause a fire concern. A 30% chance of rain at 6 a.m., 30% chance at 7 a.m. That goes for 8 a.m. as well. Then we start to taper off the rain chances. So the window for rain is pretty small, but it's right around the morning commute. So we've got to watch that. Uh, if you head out the door this morning, go ahead and take the umbrella just in case. Noon time, 70 degrees, mostly cloudy, but then partly cloudy this afternoon. Notice the temperatures a lot cooler than the last couple days. We'll be in the upper 70s for highs. Uh, that will feel uh, a lot better. So 7 a.m. There was that broken line of showers and storms, 30% working through San Antonio. Then behind it, just some clouds. I do think we get uh, some clearing and during the afternoon hours. And then uh, we'll watch for showers and storms gathering along the coast. Those will be moving in as we get into tomorrow. And I'll show you that here uh, in just a second. There is 4 a.m. Thursday, 40% chance of rain. And then as we get into Thursday, 60% chance and then 3 or 4 o'clock on Thursday, 80% chance of rain. So widespread showers and storms as we get into tomorrow. Uh, wind gusts today, gusting potentially up to 35 miles per hour behind the front. Uh, so we have to be uh, cognizant of that because things are so dry. We haven't got that good heavy rain yet. Uh, so there is going to be a red flag warning, high fire danger for San Antonio and points west later today. This goes from 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. Here's the big picture. And this front, by the way, stretches from the Great Lakes all the way down into Texas. You can see the severe weather out ahead of it. This is where the bulk of the severe weather will be. But again, we are watching what's happening on the tail end of this front down here in Texas with these showers and storms. And I just showed you this, but I'll show you one more time. Uh, the rain chances are uh, really starting to kick up Thursday into Friday. So 80% chance on Thursday. 70% chance Thursday night, 70% chance on Friday. Those are our days for good widespread rain. As far as severe weather goes, we're, again, we're not anticipating a lot of that, but there could be one or two storms uh, that are on the strong side. Rainfall potential, one to two inches here around San Antonio. We'll see higher totals off to the east, lower numbers off to the west. But if we can get a number somewhere in this range, that would be fantastic. It's exactly what we need. So 58 tomorrow. We've lowered temperatures just a little bit. That'll be the case on Friday, too. So 50s, damp, wet, showers and storms. Uh, we could see some, uh, I don't want to say widespread flooding, but there could be some localized flooding in spots, depending on where some of that heavy rain sets up. 70s Saturday, and we have taken out rain chances for the weekend. So wow. if you... If you do have Easter plans, just save it for Saturday and Sunday. I think it, it, Sunday especially looks nice, 78 and partly cloudy. Weekend's looking fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's just a couple days of rain here, and it's, again, we, we need it, so it's, it's nice to see. All right, we'll be prepared. Thank you, Justin. Yep. 453, 74 degrees. Have you been saying to yourself recently, man, I really want another Shrek movie? Well, you're <laughs> in luck. Up next, we're going to tell you about some new projects already in the works. Take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, five, one, two, fireball eight, daily four, one, zero, eight, five, fireball two. Cash five, eight, 10, 11, 13, 28. And your mega millions, one, 37, 45, 62, 64. That's a mega ball four, mega plier three. Good luck. Another Shrek movie's on the way. Plus we get a new look at the upcoming Barbie movie starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. For our latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. What? Where Looks like there's another Shrek movie on the way. Variety reports new projects in the animated franchise are in the works, with at least one of them bringing back Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, Cameron Diaz, and the rest of the Shrek gang. There have been four Shrek films so far, the first in 2001 and the last one, 2010 Shrek Forever After, all of which have grossed a total of nearly $3 billion worldwide. Hi, Barbie! Hi, Ken! Warner Brothers just dropped a second teaser trailer for their Barbie movie, featuring a longer look at Margot Robbie as the iconic doll and Ryan Gosling as Ken. 
Barbie opens in the U.S. July 21st. We've also got a premiere date for the first John Wick spin-off film, Ballerina, starring Ana de Armas. Look for that in theaters June 7th of next year. And Pharrell Williams is 50 Wednesday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And time now, 457 and 74 degrees for now. Former President Donald Trump is now charged with 34 felony accounts of falsifying business records. Up next, now that he's pled not guilty, what, the Trump, what Trump is telling family, friends and supporters about what's next for his campaign. And we're going to tell you the status of the 21 pieces of gun safety legislation that are being proposed at the Texas legislature in honor of the 21 victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. Steven's in the studio and he's got eyes on 35 South at Randolph and a minor accident there. We'll have an update coming up in a matter of minutes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Some tense moments on San Antonio's north side finally brought to an end overnight. Just ahead, why four area law enforcement agencies had to respond to this incident. President Trump defiant after his historic arraignment inside this Manhattan courthouse. I'm Morgan Norwood, and coming up, I'll tell you what's next for this case. And let's look out there with live cam starting humid at 74 degrees. We're expecting a few days of rain, but we're going to check in with Justin to see how long that will last. Good morning, everybody. We made it to hump day. It's Wednesday, April 5th. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we need the rain, so let's go over and check in with Justin to see if we'll get it like for the rest of the week. Uh, it's it's looking that way. Today's more of an isolated situation. We got a front coming through this morning, so we'll see a small window for showers and storms. But Thursday and Friday, we're seeing widespread rain, so get the umbrellas ready and be prepared for some wet roads coming up. Here's the live radar right now. We've got some showers and storms developing along a front, and that is up near the junction area north of Fredericksburg. It's making some pretty good progress out to the south and east, and I want to keep a close eye on these storms. Nothing severe right now, but I do think we can see a couple strong storms along this boundary as it progresses off to the south and east uh, throughout the morning hours. As far as timing, probably gets to San Antonio here in about two hours or so. So uh, not perfect as far as timing is concerned uh, because of course the morning commute will be uh, will be kind of in the thick of it at that point. Here's a little closer look at these showers and storms uh, now just south of Junction. This is a broken line and all indications are that for the most part it'll hold together as it pushes south and east and that's something we'll be keeping a close eye on. Now the window is small. Uh, once this line passes by, uh, we'll get some quieter conditions, but gusty winds. Uh, speaking of which, here are the weather headlines. So that cold front, a few showers and storms along that boundary this morning, then turning windy. We have a high fire danger today before soaking rains arrive early tomorrow. So a lot to look at here. 75 and cloudy, dew point at 69, southeasterly winds at 14. And here's your KSAT 12-hour forecast. 7 a.m., 30% chance of rain. As the kids head to school this morning, go ahead and send them with an umbrella. Have an umbrella with you as you uh, uh, head out to work. Uh, but know that the rain chances will come to an end mid-morning. Noontime, 70 degrees. And then we're up to the upper 70s this afternoon. It'll feel much, much better behind this front. Uh, again, and then rain chances really do kick in tomorrow. Much more on that in just a bit, but let's get over to Steven now. I know you'll be watching those storms closely as well. Yep, you know, Justin, we have been talking about it nonstop since you brought this up. So obviously we're going to keep a very close eye on this, but uh, we are keeping a close eye on this crash as well at 35 at Randolph. Let's get a quick look here at TransGuide now because what we have been seeing out there are flashing lights. Now, uh, from what we know that this is a minor crash that's been reported and yeah, you see some vehicles taking it slow out there on the roadways. Uh, that's great. We want you to take it slow out there anytime you see those flashing lights and make sure to move over or slow down. But this isn't a serious traffic issue, at least just yet, because the morning uh, community is still pretty early, so we're not seeing a lot of folks out there. But nonetheless, this is actually in the southbound lanes as you approach Loop 410. So watch out if you have to travel into the Alamo City, let's say from Live Oak. But other than that, it's pretty much a quiet start here in the metropolitan area. But as Justin said, uh, you know, being be keeping a very close eye on the weather over the next few days, especially on the roadways. So just give yourself plenty of times and make sure to plan accordingly as the uh, days do get a little bit uh, soggy uh, up ahead. But let's take a look at some of these travel times if you plan on 
hitting the roads and maybe heading to the Alamo City. Things are still pretty green if you're traveling along I-10 eastbound from Bernie. Right now, 25 minutes to the Alamo City. 281 southbound if you're heading in from Bulverde. Well, no need to hurry there. 26 minutes, not a bad start. And 26 minutes along I-35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. That crash really isn't impacting traffic just yet, but let's hope we can see some better progress here uh, in the next few minutes and hope everyone's doing okay. But we're going to continue to watch this area closely and have those updates coming up a little later on. Mark. Thank you, sir. New this morning, shots ring out overnight on San Antonio's north side. Happened just after midnight along Highway 281 near East Sonterra Boulevard in the Hollywood Park area. According to the Hill Country Village Police Department, officers from four agencies responded to the call for suspects in vehicles shooting at each other. Hollywood Park police were able to pull over one of the vehicles on the access road of 281. We're told at one point five suspects in a vehicle were fighting with each other and with police officers. About 12 police and Bear County deputy units responded to the scene and were able to get the situation under control. So far, there's no word on any arrests or injuries. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nierberg announcing his position on the controversial charter amendment Proposition A right here on KSAT during a live interview last night. The expansive Prop A includes numerous proposed changes to the city charter regarding policing. Sarah Costa joins us live from downtown with why the mayor says he's against the proposition on the May ballot. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Steph. Yeah, this is the first time the mayor has spoken out against this issue that's going to be on the ballot. He did so live during the KSATS newscast at 6 p.m. last night in a live interview, and he raised some major concerns that he has about Prop A. This comes a month before voters will decide on Prop A on the May 6th election. So Prop A aims to decriminalize abortion, marijuana possession, and would mandate some people who get caught stealing or drawing graffiti on property get cited instead of arrested. So as well as forbidding police from arresting people for criminal abortions or a misdemeanor pot possession. So Nirenberg says Prop A is trying to solve problems at the wrong levels of government. As for the mayor himself, he raised two major issues with the proposition. Number one, he says the issue of decriminalizing abortion and marijuana laws should be taken up at the state level. And number two, the mayor says he is concerned about the proposal's wording. He says that the San that the San Antonio City Council recently passed a resolution supporting women's reprodu reproductive rights. But, quote, he says, we need to work at the state level to get those rights restored, end quote. Nuremberg added that Prop A will ignore victims of crime from small businesses to nonprofits to really any working family who wakes up to a smashed car window. There's a lot in there. Um, but what troubles me is the lack of consequences for theft up to $750 and, and property damage up to $2,500. That's not pocket change. It's just a citation to appear to court. This does not mean that you do not face repercussions for your actions. Whether you go to jail or you go to a diversion program or you show up to court and they drop your marijuana possession, that's Ananda Tomas with Act for SA. She says a citation doesn't eliminate arrests, but gives judges discretion in finding a suitable punishment on a case-by-case -case basis. So even with opposing views, both the mayor and Ananda agree on one thing, that the voters need to read that proposition in full before making that decision and really understanding what Prop A is about. Now the mayor says when you do go to the ballots on May 6th, it it's going to be two pages, and you can find a more in-depth explanation of Prop A right now on KSAT.com. Live from downtown, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. A one-year-old child is critically hurt after being hit by a vehicle. The accident happened yesterday outside of a store on South Flores. San Antonio police say the child was hit after getting out of a car. The driver who hit the child stopped to help, so that person is not being charged. Since the start of the 2023 Texas legislative session, State Senator Roland Gutierrez and other state lawmakers have introduced 21 pieces of legislation in honor of the 21 victims at Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Nearly every week, Gutierrez has been joined by victims' families of mass shootings from across our state. In this session, Gutierrez and his fellow lawmakers have proposed things like stricter background checks, raising the age to purchase semi-automatic weapons, and databases for ammunition purchases. Enough is enough, you know, it's a simple 
states that go off in 18 to 21. Um, if that was in place during you know, last year, if this were to happen, at this point, the 18 bills introduced by Gutierrez's office have been referred to the State Affairs, Criminal Justice and Education Committees. Now to former President Donald Trump and his day in court as he went before a judge. The charges he faces center on a hush money deal with porn star Stormy Daniels. Now, however, prosecutors are also accusing the former president of a broader scheme. ABC's Morgan Norwood reporting that this morning Trump is reacting to the charges. This morning, former President Trump reacting for the first time to the dozens of felonies he faces. Seething with defiance, Trump rallied his loyal supporters at Mar-a-Lago, calling the charges an insult to the country. The only crime that I have committed is to fearlessly defend our nation from those who seek to destroy it. The former president arriving to court via police motorcade quickly hustled into the courthouse by Secret Service where he pleaded not guilty to 34 state felony charges that he repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. A catch and kill scheme. That is a scheme to buy and suppress negative information to help Mr. Trump's chance of winning the election. A charge of falsifying business records is typically a misdemeanor in New York, but the charge can be upgraded to a felony if it's tied to another crime, such as tax or campaign finance violations. It's, it's uh, shocking to me that a state prosecutor would try and prosecute something as thin as this and prosecute a violation of federal election laws when they're state prosecutors. The district attorney's office had looked into this case before, but DA Alvin Bragg saying he's bringing the case now because of new evidence, but he did not elaborate. Trump's legal team calling it political persecution. The court proceedings, a historic first for sitting or former American president, concluded in just under one hour. He was reserved, he was calm. Judge Juan Marchand did not place a gag order on the case, but he did advise Trump to refrain from making statements that are likely to incite violence. And Trump is due back inside this Manhattan courthouse December 4th, with a trial expected to begin in January, going on right through the election year. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, New York. Time check, 5-11, 74 degrees. Let's look out there with live cam. It is humid now, but we're expecting that cold front to come in and kind of put that at ease and we're also expecting showers so we're going to check in with Justin to see how long that will last and what our Easter weekend looks like. We'll be right back. Five fifteen. General Motors has overtaken Ford to become the second best seller of electric vehicles here in the U.S. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bites. Today's Tech Bites, a new contender in America's race to make electric vehicles. General Motors has moved ahead of Ford to become the second leading seller of all EV vehicles in the U.S. GM sold about 21,000 in this year's first quarter. Tesla, though, is far ahead at number one. If you have a Samsung Galaxy 4 or 5 watch, you can now use it to monitor your heart rate on Peloton exercise equipment. First, you have to install the Peloton app on your watch, then you follow the connect prompt users will see their heart rate synced in real time on the machine finally you can now enjoy multiplayer games on facebook messenger video calls the new feature allows users to chat with friends and to play 14 games including old favorites like words with friends they're expected to add more free games soon those are your tech bites i'm Rihanna and ali have a great day and time now, it's 516 and 74 degrees for now. We've got some flashing lights on one of those giant flyovers, 410 Crossroads area. We'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos coming up a little later in the newscast. Mr. Clean Magic Eraser powers through tough messes. So it makes it look like I spent hours cleaning. And no, I didn't. It makes my running shoe look like new. It's amazing. Wow. It makes it look like... I don't have kids at all. It's so good. It makes it look like I have magical powers. With 80% less scrubbing, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser makes cleaning easy. Also available in sheets. Had enough? No. Arthritis. Here. Ask for cream arthritis. Full prescription strength. Reduces inflammation. Thank the gods. Don't thank them too soon. Kick pain in the Asper cream. 
We're reinventing our network. With smarter, more efficient routes. So you can deliver more value to your customers. Fast. Reliable. Perfectly orchestrated. The United States Postal Service. All right, guys, uh, time check is 519. We're approaching 520. We're keeping a very close eye on the roadways, and uh, that includes 410 at Crossroads. Check it out. We actually have some flashing lights out there, as Mark pointed out. Uh, right now, nothing's been reported just yet from Tech Stop, but it does look like this could be a stalled via bus. Uh, we see vehicles that are making their way on the flyover ramp without any trouble, but nonetheless, you got to watch out anytime you see those flashing lights out there. We're also keeping a very close eye here at 35 southbound at Loop 410, where we have a crash that's been reported. Uh, it does look like we are at the tail end of it. So first responders have been working to clear this up. Let's keep our fingers crossed that we won't see any delays with traffic, but let's also hope everyone's doing okay out there. Giving you a wide look at the metropolitan area. Thankfully, some relief here. Lots of green on the screen, but plenty of that construction. So I want to remind you of what's taking place here off Loop 1604, this time on the northeast side of San Antonio. Demolition work. Uh, this is going to start uh, today, and it's a long-term cl long -term closure, which means it's going to take place 24-7. This will take us all the way up until May 1st. That's that sounds like a ways away, but it's really just a few weeks away. Actually, uh, what we'll see out there is 1604 eastbound to the westbound turnaround closure right there at Lookout Road. But you know where to find that information, ksat.com slash traffic. Uh, and right now, traffic here, Justin, seems to be moving along. But again, just watch out anytime you see those flashing lights. Stephen, thank you. And uh, we'll start with the radar this morning. We were watching some showers and storms up across the hill country. This is along a frontal boundary, and this broken line of rain is going to work its way towards San Antonio here next couple of hours. And this is just kind of the appetizer because tomorrow and Friday we see widespread showers and storms in the forecast. So this is kind of the start of things. That front uh, still to our north and west at this hour and we'll closer look here. Uh, you can see some showers and storms. Nothing severe. We really don't anticipate uh, really a lot of uh, strong to severe weather with this line, but there could be one or two strong storms mixed in there. And this is starting to work its way into Gillespie County. You can kind of see the leading edge right there. So this will be in Fredericksburg here very soon, eventually working its way down towards Kerrville. You can see a little bit of rain out of this. And this is the latest uh, Tyvee High School around 544 this morning. And uh, Ingram, 528, that's when you can expect some of these showers to make their way into your neck of the woods. Looks like storms are a little more intense as you get off to the north and east. But this line, if it holds together, and again, it should, uh, we'll make it into San Antonio probably around uh, 6, 7 o'clock this morning. And we'll certainly be keeping tabs on it as it arrives. It's a small window for rain. Once that uh, line moves through, then we'll... Uh, clear out a little bit and we'll get some gusty winds. 75 right now cloudy. It's still very humid. The southeasterly winds are still in place and there are those rain chances we were talking about. 7, 8 o'clock, 30% chance of rain. We bring it down to 20% chance at 9 a.m. The rain chances essentially go away. Noontime, 70. Then we're up around 78 for a high today. That's it. So what a change from yesterday. It'll feel a lot better. There's that line of storms. There's showers and storms around 7 o'clock. And then 9 a.m. it's moving south and east. Still have some clouds in place, but I think we'll see some sun, uh, a mixture of clouds and sun this afternoon. Uh, that's around 5 o'clock. Keep in mind, we'll get those gusty winds behind the front. Gusts up to 35 through the morning hours. Maybe coming down a little bit this afternoon, but it'll still be breezy to windy. And that brings in our next issue. Red flag warnings in effect for a large portion of the area. If we do get any fires started, they would spread very quickly. So that's just something to keep in mind today. Here's the setup. Look at all the tornado watch boxes off to our north and east. So a whole lot of severe weather along this frontal boundary as it progresses south and east. It's going to be a very busy morning to our north. But keep in mind, again, we're on the tail end of things. So that line, as we just showed you, moves through. And then we see uh, showers and storms gather along the coast tonight. And then watch what happens as we get into tomorrow. Showers and storms begin to work their way back to the north and west. So by 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, rain chances are starting to increase. And by the morning commute, showers and storms a good bet. We're going to see widespread rain tomorrow. 80% chance as we head into the afternoon. And we could see some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there. So it'll be a busy day tomorrow. And on Friday, you look at rain chances here. 70 to 80% chance of rain Thursday through Friday. 
The rain chances do taper off as we head into the weekend. One to two inches of rain possible as uh, we get into the uh, next couple of days. This is through Friday night. Some bigger totals off to the east. So encouraging numbers here as we look at the rainfall. Uh, it will be cooler next couple of days. I got to warn you there. Upper 50s. You'll want the coat and the umbrella Thursday and Friday does clear out some for the weekend. 70 Saturday. Easter Sunday looks good. 78. So we just got to watch the storms this morning and then the uh, scattered rain, some pockets of heavy rain next few days. And also those cooler temperatures with the rain. I like that. Upper 50s, that's uh, kind of a shock to the system considering where we've been. True. Thank yeah. you, Justin. Right now we're at 524, 74 degrees. Coming up next, we're going to show you the latest look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, plus actor Jim Belushi is back for a third season of his popular show. 527, everyone's favorite web slinger is back in a new animated feature. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. <sighs> Send me home. I can't do that. I can do both! Spider-Man always. Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now! Here's the latest look at Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The follow-up to the Oscar-winning Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse swings in the theaters June 2nd. Seven years ago, I had a dream I had all this land and thought, why not grow cannabis? Jim Belushi has gone from Chicago actor to Oregon pot farmer in the reality series Growing Belushi. The first two seasons brought both lows and highs, so to speak, but nothing to prepare him or viewers for season three. Well, the first episode is harrowing. My barn burned down last year with $500,000 worth of cannabis, a $400,000 barn. And I think it's organized crime that did it because the black market in Oregon and Northern California is notorious for intimidation. Season three of Growing Belushi debuts today on Discovery Plus. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 529, 74 degrees. Results are in for what might be the most consequential election of the year. Up next, how two races in Wisconsin and Illinois could have a big impact on the rest of the nation. Plus, we'll tell you how two former Oklahoma County jail guards got into trouble for punishing inmates with a popular children's song. And this is not your parents' ketchup. How Heinz is spicing things up with some new versions of its popular ketchup. Election results coming in as the abortion fight plays out in Wisconsin's record-breaking Supreme Court race and the debate over policing takes center stage in Chicago. Why the results of these races could have an impact nationwide. And let's look out there with live cam starting at 74 degrees and we need that rain. So Justin says we will have that rain very soon. And a good morning to you. We've made it to Wednesday, April 5th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. So we need to get our umbrellas ready for this week. We do. Uh, this morning, there's a small window for some rain, so you'll want to be prepared for that. And then tomorrow and Friday, it's not an all-day thing. It's going to be raining all day, but we're going to have a lot of rain on the radar. It, it'll be busy. So uh, this is a good thing. Uh, we just need to be ready again for some of that activity, especially this morning, because we could see a couple of storms involved uh, with a frontal battery making its way through the hill country right now. You can see it there. Pretty clearly just north of Fredericksburg, extending back towards Rialp County this morning. That is along that front and it's making some good headway. So uh, Fredericksburg, this is right on your doorstep. You're going to see some showers and storms here pretty soon. You're probably already hearing some of the thunder as these storms move south and east. We're also noticing uh, the showers and storms closing in on Kerrville, probably another 30 minutes or so before it reaches you. And then this extends back down into the hill country. What about San Antonio? Well, I think uh, between 7 and 8 o'clock, these storms will be working their way in. Broken line, it should happen pretty quickly. We'll see uh, this move through. And then behind the front, we'll get some gusty winds. So the window is small this morning, uh, but it is there as you head out the door. Be aware. Right now, we've got cloudy skies and 75 degrees. Two point is at 69. Gusty southeasterly winds at 14. And in case that 12 hour forecast, 30% chance of rain. 7, 8 o'clock, uh, we'll drop it to 20% at 9 a.m. And then by noontime, 
uh, basically just windy and 70. High temperatures will be cooler today because of that front, partly cloudy this afternoon, and we're up around 78. Again, things change tonight as more rain starts to move in, and Thursday and Friday become quite Busy. An update on that forecast here in just a few minutes. We'll get over to Stephen now. We've had a couple of issues so far. Yeah, Justin, uh, not major issues, but still we want people to be aware of what uh, is out there before they have to hit the roadways. Let's go ahead and first start here at 410 at Crossroads. This is the shot we showed you with uh, what appears to be a stalled via bus, and you can see that progress is being made. We do have a Texas Hero truck on the scene, which is good news, but watch out if you're heading in that direction because we do want to make sure you're aware of those flashing lights and let those first responders do their job. But better news to report out here at 35 southbound at loop 410 that crash that was lingering around the area looks to have cleared out so it doesn't look like this will be an issue for anyone that may be heading in the southbound lanes of 35 in the next few minutes or so but wide look at the map now just really shows some quiet uh, roadways and plenty of construction we'll have a lot of time to talk about that later but let's get to some travel times if you hit the if you plan on hitting the roads from us again it's still in the green i-10 westbound we can see about 29 minutes at this hour 33 along 87 northbound from lavernia and about a 28 minute drive time for our friends down in Floresville. So I wouldn't say that you need to rush out the door, but definitely take it slow anytime you see those flashing lights out there. Uh, hopefully we'll have a better update here along 410 at Crossroads, but we'll watch that area closely and then we'll have an update on more construction that is taking place this week. That'll be coming up a little bit later on. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, gunfire and flying fists have made for a busy night on the north side of town. Officers from at least four different agencies all met up to take down the group of people who they say were responsible, responsible for it all. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened along Highway 281 north of Bitters Road. Katrina, was anyone hurt? Well, there may be a few bumps and bruises from what happened here, but as far as we know, no one was hit by any of the gunfire. Fists were flying, though, as police took down those suspects. Now, this started just up the road with Hollywood Park police investigating reports of people in two vehicles shooting at each other. That was just before 1 o'clock this morning. They say they pulled over one car on the Highway 281 access road, then found they needed backup. A call for an officer in trouble brought out police from San Antonio and Hill Country Village, as well as Bear County deputies. Our camera captured what seemed to be a brawl of sorts with some of the suspects fighting each other and officers. The police ended up taking several people into custody. We don't know yet exactly what charges they will face, and it did not appear that anyone needed any medical attention from the fight or from any of the gunshots. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. This morning, the results are in for what might be the most consequential election of the year so far. A judge's victory in Wisconsin means liberals will control the state Supreme Court when it considers Wisconsin's abortion ban. Meanwhile, Brandon Johnson is set to become Chicago's mayor after a race that focused on policing. CNN's Amy Kiley explains how this could impact the rest of the nation. It's really our democracy is on the line and everything we care about. Election results from Wisconsin and Chicago are speaking to the national issues of abortion and policing. In Wisconsin, liberals are taking control of the state Supreme Court after the victory of Justice-elect Janet Protasiewicz. Our state is taking a step forward to a better and brighter future where our rights and freedoms will be protected. <laughs> Her win over conservative Daniel Kelly, a former state Supreme Court justice, is one of the most consequential election outcomes of the year. That's because the Wisconsin Supreme Court is poised to hear challenges to the state's 1849 abortion ban. Meanwhile, in Chicago... With our voices and our votes, we have ushered in a new chapter in the history of our city. Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson is set to become the city's new mayor. He's pledging to keep funding the Chicago police, despite his non-binding resolution in 2020 to defund the department. For supporters of his opponent, former Chicago Schools Chief Paul Vallis, Johnson has this message. I care about you. I value you. And I want to hear from you. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Overnight, Israeli police stormed a mosque in Jerusalem's old city, firing stun grenades at Palestinians who hurled stones and firecrackers in a burst of violence during a sensitive holiday season. The Israeli police arrested more than 350 people during the raid. 
Palestinian militants in Gaza responded with rocket fire on southern Israel, drawing an Israeli airstrike in response. The violence came as Muslims marked the month of Ramadan and Jews prepared to celebrate Passover at sundown tonight. Such confrontations at the hotly contested compound have sparked deadly cross-border wars between Israel and Gaza's Hamas rulers in the past. President Biden will not be attending next month's coronation of King Charles III, but the First Lady will be. The White House says that President Biden spoke with King Charles III on the phone Tuesday and congratulated him on his upcoming coronation. According to a readout of the call, the president confirmed that First Lady Jill Biden will be there on behalf of the U.S. In fact, no previous U.S. president has ever attended a British monarch's coronation. President Biden did say he looked forward to meeting with the king at a future date. King Charles III will officially be crowned on May 6. Did you know that the famous Baby Shark song was used as a form of punishment? Now two former Oklahoma County jail guards have been sentenced for punishing inmates with the popular children's song. Gregory Butler Jr. and Christian Miles pleaded no contest to misdemeanor cruelty charges for the 2019 incident. The two accused of forcing inmates at the Oklahoma County Jail to stand while handcuffed and listen to the children's song on repeat, including Baby Shark. Butler and Miles were put on probation for two years and fined $200. They were also ordered to complete 40 hours community service and pay $300 in compensation for the victims. Both resigned once the investigation began. And time now, it's 540 and 74 degrees for now. If you're looking to spice up your life, a little Heinz has you covered. Why new versions of its famous ketchup are leaving people a little hot under the collar. And thinking about taking a buddy on your next vacation, well, Southwest wants to let them fly with you for free, but you'll have to act fast. We're going to tell you how next. And outside with live cam, waiting on some showers, and we're already seeing some of those show up on this live cam around town. This is just kind of to wet the whistle, all right? Kind of an appetizer. Uh, Justin talks about the entree he's serving up a little later in the newscast. In your morning consumer headlines, if you're planning on a summer vacation, don't forget to take a buddy. That's because Southwest Airlines is bringing back its companion pass. It allows travelers to designate one person to fly with them for free. You'll have to act fast to qualify. A member of Southwest Frequent Flyer Program needs to register for the promotion. Then they have to purchase a ticket by tonight for a flight before May 24th. Once that's done, a companion pass will be on their account by August 15th. The Buddy Pass will work on as many flights as they want between August 15th and September 30th. Spicy foods are hot right now. That's why Heinz is spicing up its sauces, adding new hot pepper ketchup flavors. So this, this is not your parents' ketchup. The new flavors are chipotle, jalapeno, and habanero. There's also a new hot Heinz 57 sauce. Heinz says nearly half of millennials and Gen Z shoppers buy spicy sauces regularly and actively look for a variety of flavor options again something else that's going to sell like crazy i think that one will be popular very popular because i mean everybody i know well a lot of people i know not everyone loves spicy whataburger i was ketchup, just going right? to say the spicy ketchup right. yeah Justin, would you pay extra for spicy whataburger ketchup at at the grocery store i would okay oh yeah. okay. Good call. a shocking answer from justin <laughs> 545, 74 degrees. The Animal Defense League has a cute pet ready for adoption. We're going to introduce you to next. And Trans Guide. Yes, we've got wet roads in a few spots. Children still tracking some flashing lights on that ramp over there at 10 and Crossroads. Be right back. All right, Nadia's here from the Animal Defense League, and boy, perfect sized dog, and look at how well behaved this guy is. He's amazing, he's amazing. He's Ken, he's two years old, about 45 pounds, a, a little uh, staffy mix, terrier mm -hmm. mix, and as you can tell, very chill, loving guy. But still plenty of energy, I mean, again, backyard, tennis ball with the kids, good jogging partner, and he's just got these eyes, they're kind of soft and brown, yes, don't you, and oh, look, right behind the ears right there, is that a good spot? Yes. What y'all got going on? What are you up to? Good so fun. the month of April, we have Cocktails for a Cause happening with our friends at Bombay Bas Bicycle Club mm -hmm. up the street. And um, they have a Maui Mascal Mule. Mule. 
M E W, and for every cocktail that is sold, a dollar goes back to the Animal Defense League. And then on April 21st, we're going to have a Yappy Hour again, cocktails for a cause, <laughs> five to seven, and 20% of the proceeds go back to ADL. So definitely this month, check out Bombay Bicycle Club. And of course, check out all their Fiesta gear that they have there. And I'll tell you what, I was scratching him on the head, and he's just putting his weight on my arm because he was just loving that. So, oh yes, you're a good boy. Need a big backyard with him though, and. Uh, you know, lots of energy. If you'd like more information on him, about all the events going on, all the Fiesta stuff, 11th Grand in Nacogdoches, the Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo, PetSmart over there on Four Winds, or just head on over to ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. You're welcome. 549. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. Well, uh, roads are relatively quiet right now, guys, but we do have some things that we have mentioned. We talked about that stalled via bus along 410 at Crossroads. Doesn't appear to be causing any issues just yet, but we're getting closer to 6 a.m., so we're going to see the commute pick up in a lot of areas. But let's get a quick look around town. There's 35 in Nogalitos. So you can see that uh, roads are quiet, sure, but it's getting a little bit busier minute by minute. Right now, I would say is a good time to head out the door. Go ahead and get your day started. Grab that cup of coffee or maybe a breakfast taco. Taking you right here to the map, it's the same story. Here, plenty of green on the screen and a lot of that scattered road work that's taking place. Uh, I mentioned this earlier in the week, so just be prepared again because we're going to see that utility work along State Highway 16 or Bandera Road take us all the way up until the end of the work week. Remember that begins around nine in the morning and should wrap around three in the afternoon, keeping our fingers crossed. What we'll see out there are alternating lane closures from Loop 1604 to Circle A. But what you can do is uh, go ahead and head over to ksat.com slash traffic. We have a full list of closures over there, uh, but as you can see, from these shots at Transguide, things have been moving along without any trouble as I try to maneuver my way around the traffic desk and make it to the anchor desk. <laughs> it's always a little bit of a task doing that, but. Mm. Um, but you have your eyes on the road. You're not on your phone. Uh, no, I, oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm never on my phone. Only, not, uh, yeah. No. Not easily distracted in the studio. No. So you're, you're a good walker, Stephen. Oh, wow. I'm pretty sure I saw you signal a left hand turn. Oh, he did. So. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. On the way over I here. I did. Yeah. And he has one of those old school uh, bicycle <laughs> Yeah, the commute was clear. <laughs> That's good, good news. Yes, thank you. That's good. Uh, the commute could get uh, a little more hairy later this morning because we've got a, a line of uh, broken line of showers and storms working their way towards San Antonio. You can see it very clearly there right along our frontal boundary uh, right now in the Hill Country. Quite a few lightning strikes as you get north of Fredericksburg, and this activity is working in Fredericksburg at this hour. So let's zoom in a little bit closer and take a look at some of this activity. It's right on your doorstep in Fredericksburg. You're probably hearing some thunder, seeing some lightning there in the distance right along 290. And this extends back uh, just north of Kerrville and then back towards Lakey where got a pretty good looking storm there. Again, nothing severe at the moment, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a strong storm or two. That's something we need to watch over the next couple of hours. Let's zoom in a little bit closer to this activity near Lakey. And we are seeing some lightning strikes associated with this along Highway 83 and then some uh, activity right over Camp Wood as well. Uh, this line, by the way, makes it into San Antonio probably around 7 or 8 o'clock this morning. And as it does, if it holds together, we'll see uh, some of this uh, shower and storm activity move into San Antonio. Also noticing a few returns there along 35 on the southwest side, so a few showers there. Uh, the window for rain, is, I, as I said, 7 8 o'clock, it, it's, it's going to be fairly small once this moves through then uh, we see the rain chances really fall off and then we're just left with partly to mostly cloudy skies as we head into the afternoon. The other component to this though are going to be the gusty winds. We'll see winds gusting up to potentially 35 miles per hour behind this front. So 30% chance 7 to 8 o'clock this morning. That's right around when we're taking the kids to school or maybe headed to work. So be aware and then rain chances fall off 70 noontime and then by this afternoon 78 should turn into a pretty nice day behind the front. It will be cooler, but those wind gusts gusting up to 35, especially this morning uh, over the next several hours as the front comes through and then falling off a little bit this afternoon, but still breezy. Uh, with that in mind, gusty winds means we have a high fire danger in the sense that if any fire were to develop, it could spread pretty quickly. Uh, especially in those counties shaded in pink. Right now, 75 and cloudy, dew point at 69, so it's still warm and humid. And then as we get into tonight, we're going to fast forward here to tomorrow morning, 4 a.m. Showers and storms gathering across our coastal counties. This all moves in by tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning's commute is going to be wet, and we're going to see showers and storms most of the day on Thursday. Won't rain all day, but intermittent rain, about an 80% chance. There could be some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there, too. Rainfall potential. 
Highest off to our east where they could see three inches plus here in San Antonio, one to two inches. So some good rain tomorrow and Friday, but cool. Keep the jacket with you. Highs only in the upper 50s. It does clear out this weekend and we'll be up around 78 for Easter Sunday. We'll be right back. Coming up here on GMA, we begin with the weather. A tropical feel here in Chicago. We're in a severe thunderstorm. Watch that elevated risk for much of the Great Lakes down into uh, the Mid-South. We're going to be not only tracking what's happening now, but through the day and showing you the latest pictures from the tornadoes uh, in the last 24 hours. I'll track that, but coming up on GMA, of course, we have to get to the reaction after former President Trump surrendered to authorities in New York City, delivering a defiant speech once he got back to Florida. We're going to have the latest on those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Easter preparations begin tomorrow in San Antonio. City officials announcing that's the day curfew at select parks will be lifted for overnight camping. Here's a list of just some of the parks where overnight camping will be happening. Curfew will be lifted tomorrow at 11 and resume Easter Sunday at 11 p.m. Parks on the list include Brackenridge, McAllister, MLK, Roosevelt, Southside Lions, just to name a few. For more details and address locations, head over to ksat.com. Ahead in the next hour of GMSA, do you feel like your doctor is gaslighting you when you step into a doctor's office? We'll explain what it means and how it's impacting people around the world. And church bells are keeping one Northwest Side resident wide awake. We'll tell you what's being done about the noise coming from one home that was turned into a church. And checking Transkive, still keeping an eye on problems on the upper level there. Those flyovers at 410 and Crossroads. We do have some rain in the area, so factor that into your morning commute.